This is Macro Analytics, delivering frank conversations on global macroeconomics and market analysis outside the mainstream, featuring discussions and debates between Gordon T. Long, publisher and editor of GordonTLong.com and his guests. The content of this discussion is strictly the opinion of the participants. It is in no way a solicitation for business, nor is it to be considered investment advice of any sort. Always consult a registered investment advisor before making any investment decision. These discussions are extremely hard-hitting and terribly frank, and parental discretion is advised. Now, on to the show. Good morning. I'm Gord Long with GordonTLong.com. As part of our ongoing series on financial oppression, I have Egon von Greer joining us from Zurich, Switzerland, a former banker, former corporate vice chairman of a FTSE 100 corporation, and presently founder and managing partner of Matterhorn Asset Management and Gold Switzerland. Welcome back, Egon. Gordon, always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for inviting me. Though, you know, though we've had you on before, some of our growing first-time listeners may not be familiar with your background. Could, could you give um, our listeners just a brief overview of the things that you've been involved with and the expertise that you bring to the uh, to your group? Yes. Well, as you said, I, I was initially in banking in Switzerland, uh, and then for 17 years I was with the FTSE 100 company that we built from very small to, to a major uh, company in the UK. Um, and um, then... I, I uh, continued my, in my investment or financial career by, by setting up my own investment company uh, uh, after that. Now, from my point of view, my life has always been about understanding risk uh, and protecting the downside, because as we all know, the upside takes care of itself. But whether it was in banking or in corporate life, I always needed to understand what is the downside? How do we protect that? And that is the same theme and philosophy that, that I have been practicing uh, in, in Macro and Asset Management. Um, and this is why when I founded Macro in, in, in the late 1990s, um, I was really uh, already at that point starting to get concerned about what was happening in the world. Uh, and I realized that wealth preservation was absolutely critical uh, for the coming years or even uh, decades. Um, and that's why we set up a, a special division called Gold Switzerland uh, within Matter on Asset Management. And this is the precious metals division of Matter on Asset Management. And this was really for the purpose of assisting investors to preserve wealth in the form of physical precious metals, gold and silver primarily, stored outside the banking system in, in, in ultra secure vaults. Um, and we have the, uh, set up vaults in Switzerland. We have two vaults here, one in Zurich and one in the Swiss Alps, which is the biggest gold vault in the world and uh, most probably also the, the most secure vault in the world. Uh, we have also vaults in Singapore and Hong Kong. Now, uh, if we just look at um, the, the, the way that we uh, organize this for investors, we deliberately eliminate ourselves as a counterparty risk. So we facilitate the investment in precious metals for investors. Um, but the metals are held directly in the name of the investors. And therefore, they can go to any of the vaults directly, even without our assistance. Normally, of course, we will do everything for them, but they have the assurance uh, that they don't have us as counterparty. Not that, of course, we are any risk as counterparty because we follow our own wealth preservation principles. Uh, but nevertheless, we, we feel that we are actually the only company in the world that offers this facility, that is, that uh, clients have their own precious metals, gold bars, silver bars, numbered in their own name, but also that they can go straight to the vault and inspect them or take them out. And that is unique. Uh, and we have today clients in over 40 countries. We have individuals, family offices, uh, as well as uh, institutional clients. So uh, just looking back at, at the, 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 the company's um, raison d'etre, if you want. But this is, we believe that the world is 
in a bigger mess than it's ever been as far as I can see going back in history. The risks are absolutely unprecedented. You have virtually every single major economy which is now bankrupt. Japan, in my view, will not survive. Uh, the country will survive, but the economy will, will um, sink down into the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it sounds... I got this image. <laughs> it's, it, it, I, I know, it's happening, but actually, you know, they are just living on borrowed time. Uh, and, and sadly, uh, at some point, this will just uh, implode the, the Japanese economy. We have this big problems in China that has increased borrowings dramatically um, in, in, by, by about 20 trillion in, uh, in the last few years. Um, and they will have to readjust also. Hopefully they can organize that internally. But when China start, stops uh, trading with the rest of the world or reduces its trading, we've already seen that. That will have a major, major effect on the world economy and world trade. And you know, just quickly coming to Europe, you know the problems in Europe. I mean, we have, I mean, Greece is just, for the time being, uh, surviving uh, on a thin thread. Uh, and I don't think, you know, they will not make it. They haven't. They're already bankrupt, as are many other European countries. So, you know, whether they get, go out of the, the uh, Eurozone um, soon or, or in a few months, it makes no difference. The country is absolutely bankrupt. There is no solution to it. The best would, for them would, of course, be to renege on the debt and to uh, create a, a, a new currency like the old drachma. Or, um, will they do that? Well, we'll see. But, but uh, the sad thing is that then we will have, of course, the domino effect of that. So, and, and then in, the U.S., in my view, is the biggest danger to the world economy, um, the, the, the temporary, uh, temporary uh, good uh, or green shoots in the U.S., uh, are, are not really green shoots. They are, they are just temporary, temporary uh, improvements, artificial be because of, of uh, previous money printing and manipulation of the markets. Uh, and also, of course, um, the, the, what is happening is that the poor are getting poorer. We have more, we have soup kitchens, as you know, in the US, they're not called, called food, food coupons. Uh, with, with uh, 50 million people on that program and 100 million people on Social Security and the debt being, of course, the biggest in the world. So anyway, you look at those risks and then you add the geopolitical risks, uh, which are immense. And, and we're now seeing uh, another form of Arab Spring in the, uh, in the way of, of actually migration to Europe with the boat people that can't be stopped. Uh, and that's just one sign of it. And, and uh, you know, we have many, I won't go through all, all these geopolitical problems, but the black swans are everywhere. And at some points, they, they will land on us, uh, or one of them or several of them, and that will be a massive problem for the world. So I'm, you know, first of all, we talk about gold as wealth preservation. Why? Because throughout history, gold has been the only money that has actually survived. No other currency has survived in history, uh, as uh, um, Mark Twain well, no, let's, let's first take um, the, well, the quote of Voltaire, who said that paper money eventually uh, returns to its intrinsic value, zero. Uh, and, of course, Mark Twain also. This is what I, you know, absolutely every investor should look at today. Mark Twain said, uh, I, I, would, I would, oh, I can't even forget, remember it now. No, the, the, um, that investors should re worry about the return of their money rather than the return on their money. Um, and, you know, people today, they're spoiled. The rich are getting richer because they're getting more and more, uh, the higher and higher returns uh, because they're standing near the printing press. And, and it's like a Ponzi scheme. If you're near the press, you can actually work the money and get it for free and, and leverage it. If you're normal people, you just get more in debt uh, and your living standards are actually declining, which is happening in many countries, including the U.S., where we see real wages haven't increased for a long time. So we come back to wealth preservation. I, let's say I am not a gold bug. It's just that I decided in 2002 that the world was in a mess and was going to be in a bigger mess. And therefore, people needed to insure part of their wealth 
by investing in physical gold and storing outside the banking system with direct control and preferably also outside their own country of residence. Um, so in 2002, we told our clients about, to invest in a major part, uh, of, major part of their assets into gold. That's when, when gold was $300. Today, gold is $1,200. So we've seen a correction now for almost four years. But I will tell you that at $1,200 is just as good a bargain as it was in 2002 at, at $300. If you look at gold adjusted for inflation, the 1200 today is about the same level as, as 300 in 2002. And of course, if you then take it back to a look at what that would, 1200 a day, what would that, what would that mean for the 1980 price of gold, which was 850? Well, in inflation adjusted terms, that would be eight and a half, uh, sorry, nine and a half thousand dollars roughly. So, you know, gold is extremely undervalued today, partly because, um, governments as well as uh, major uh, institutions and bullion banks uh, intervene in the paper market and push the price down. We are talking uh, continuously to refiners and they are producing as much as they can. They're working 24 hours um, and not that there is you know, a shortage right now of gold but that all the production is, is being absorbed by investors and we know of course virtually uh, one year's production of gold, which is two and a half thousand tons, is, is taken up by China and by India. They take m almost all of that production, and then you have the rest of the world. So the paper market is manipulated. At some point, that will not last. Central banks do not have the gold they say they have. They have lent it to the market, leased it, or sold it. Um, and at some point, when the market worries about the fact that paper loans are not going to be, uh, be actually, they are not going to get delivery of gold. Uh, they will start worrying, and, and this is when, at some point, we will see gold erupt. So coming back to the big picture, investors today have a unique chance to have some insurance and to have in the form of, of gold. We prefer gold to silver. You can have a little bit of silver, but silver is too volatile. And this is uh, now, I, I would say that this year is the last time they can buy it at a good price. And again, it should be stored outside, not in the bank, not at home, which is very dangerous, but uh, in, in very good secure vaults outside the banking system in the name of the investor. I think right now the gold is trading at the cash uh, dollar cost value. I mean, I can't get much cheaper than if that's what it costs to actually produce it, can it? No, it depends on, I mean, you know, that, that, that's another, another factor that, that uh, you know, depends on the producer, but, but you have producers where, where the cost value is around twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. And, you know, exactly. a, a lot of mines have closed down um, um, and a lot of people can't afford to produce uh, at this level. So that in itself, of course, is a major factor. So, so actually, we're in production is now. We've reached peak gold already. And production in the next few years is going to decline, and it will decline faster. Uh, also, because of, uh, when people stop producing, it will take a long time to actually uh, uh, start, uh, start producing again. So, you know, you have so many factors as that. You have the economic factors, uh, like countries being bankrupt. You have the financial factors that the banking system uh, today is also bankrupt. It is only standing because of the fact that they can value their toxic debt at uh, maturity value rather than market value. Um, and if they didn't value the market value, they would not they would not survive. And of course, you add to that the one quadrillion derivatives, which is also totally dependent on these artificially and ridiculous interest rates, which is nothing to do with demand and supply, it's only with governments mismanaging the economy and, and being forced to lower the interest rate down to zero, uh, so, so that uh, they can continue to borrow uh, money uh, and, and sadly continue to increase debt, which is going to affect the normal people in a way that, that will be, in my view, uh, very uh, upsetting for the world in the next few years. It, it's, it's, it's very troubling, uh, Egon, in many ways. You know, here we are at, 
at negative real rates, and now in Europe, a big, big movement towards negative nominal rates on interest rates, and and it begs the question with this war on cash that we're now seeing, of re even restricting the holding of cash within the banks or penalizing you. If you have cash or in, in, in terms of neg even negative rates, and when I see things like high yield being a safe haven, high yield bonds being safe haven, it's very troubling. Then you've got gold that's trading at, at, at its dollar cash uh, cost. It's hard to see downside on gold when he can't produce it any cheaper. In, and on the other hand, not trying to say these upside, but it's a phenomenal insurance policy against what could happen on the things you're talking about. It, it, it seems like an ideal uh, part of your portfolio going forward as a preservation strategy, as an insurance strategy right now with proper custodial uh, uh, management of it. I think that's absolutely critical. Am, am, I, am I right in my observations? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, the the, the uh, what is happening now is that normal people's money, if they have any money, because sadly the world is just full of debt rather than than, than surplus uh, or savings, especially for the for the middle classes and, and the poor. But but you know, the money that they do ha have is just being destroyed on a daily basis. Exactly. Uh, and and that's for normal people. Then you have also uh, retirees. Uh, I mean, pensions, they're not, in my view, there will not be pensions in the next, uh, in, in five or ten years' time, or, or I'll say uh, the pension funds will be so underfunded that whatever they have uh, will in no way meet their obligations. Uh, and people should think about that, because um, um, pension funds, what do they have? They have stocks, bonds, and, and uh, property mainly, and then some alternative uh, assets. Uh, now, all of those three, stocks, bonds, and property, is or has all been financed by the credit bubble. And they are all themselves bubble markets. And I would not be surprised to see them going down by more than 50% in the next few years in real terms. And when I say real terms, I always measure against gold because we might get inflation or hyperinflation, in which case in nominal terms they might go up. But that's irrelevant. In real terms, they will come down substantially. And this is why people actually, in my view, should worry about their savings themselves, because for the ones who have pension funds, they are not going to meet their outgoings, uh, their pension in the in coming years. So you're right, it's being, money is being destroyed for ordinary people. There's a lit, small elite that is getting the benefit of this, but the, the rest of the world uh, is uh, sadly suffering tremendously and will suffer a lot more in, in coming years. And this is why, yes, we come back to gold. All gold is is insurance, as you say. It's insurance against destruction of the of the value of uh, ordinary, well, first paper money and then also other assets. Uh, and right now, you know, the more governments mismanage the economy, the more important physical gold uh, becomes. Um, and people have to decide themselves if they buy. 10% gold with their assets, or if they buy 50% or more, that's up to everyone depending on their means, etc. In my view, uh, there is no other asset in the coming five years or longer that will protect your wealth as well as gold will. We've been doing a lot of work on financial repression in, in regards to pensions, endowments, and, and the money that's in this in a fiduciary responsibility of handing handing this money, we see something called pension poverty coming. And what's happened with pensions today, Egon, is there no long what financial repression is delivered is they're no longer risk free. Pensions now are a risky element because and it's not that the pension companies are bad, it's just they're with negative rates, et cetera, they're being forced into the kinds of risk that they have to take, a lot of private equity investments long term. That, uh, that don't have liquidity, kinds of issues that they're facing. Are you seeing at Gold Switzerland and Matterhorn new trends from institutions, et cetera, large wealth into gold, into precious metals? Is there trends there that you're uh, definitely seeing? No, no uh, not at this point. Uh, well, you know in Switzerland, you talk about pensions, by the way, that, that insurance companies and pension funds there now, they don't 
want to hold assets with the Swiss National Bank. They normally would do because that costs them three quarters of a percent now. Exactly. Negative interest rates is crazy. I mean, one day, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, some people should get a mortgage and, and, and the lender will pay them for the mortgage. I mean, that's the way it's looking now. Well, it's, happening uh, in, it's happening in Denmark right now. Is it? <laughs> is it? Yeah. Yes, it I, is. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, then let's all go there. Uh, so, um, so, but now, of course, you know, there was a, a recent example where the Swiss National Bank interfered because the pension fund um, was taking out money out of the bank uh, and wanted to store it. Uh, store the cash, uh, and and the Swiss National Bank told um, uh, the, the Swiss bank that um, they didn't like that and they should stop that. They haven't got the right to stop it, but they still advise strongly, and the bank therefore didn't want to give them the cash. This is what is happening, and, and yeah, as you said before, cash now is basically being uh, b being now looked upon as something criminal. You shouldn't have cash today. Here. Nobody's allowed cash, and this is another way for governments to control the people. Um, uh, and and you know, country after country is limiting uh, how much cash you can take out of, of the bank, and that's getting worse by the by the month. No, or even well, one of the, the reasons, Egon, we we feel financial repression authority that to implement negative rates, not negative nominal, not just negative real. To to actually make that happen, and it's it's happening at a very fast rate. To sustain it cash has to be penalized otherwise people aren't going to put them they're going to take their money out of the banks and they're yeah. going to they're going to hold the cash why should they be penalized for holding it and there and and we all know when cash withdrawals what happens are taken out what happens with with uh, liquidity and, and 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 credit and so and bank runs start to happen so they've got to stop it and that's that's part of what's going on here well, it's a longer it, term cap it's a form of capital controls for the individual Absolutely, and that will get worse. And also, you will soon get to the point when country after country will stop transfers abroad. In my view, I think that's all beginning to happen. Yeah, um, and that means that people will lose their flexibility because the whole point of wealth preservation is to keep some funds or some assets like gold and silver outside your country. So at least it'll be a lot harder for the government in question to to get yeah. hold of your money. If so you have right, it. Now, right now, with FATCA in the United States, it's almost impossible to hold money out, move money outside the, the country. And if you have it out there, the the uh, taxation on passive incomes is north of fifty five percent. So you, you're just getting absolutely clobbered on it. And the only yeah. way you can effectively invest is through exchanges, ETFs. Uh, whether they're bonds or equities, but they're through exchange controls, uh, exchanges where they're trading exchanges, which is a form of control. And if they shut down for any reason, you have no flexibility. And when you have custodial risks, where a lot of these assets are not necessarily in your name, you like MF Global, for example, and especially with ETFs growing at the rate they're growing in the international, there's a real issue there, a serious issue there. And, and, and the authorities know that. Yes, absolutely. So, but today still, um, I mean, this fact is, is making life very difficult for the whole world. You know, reg regulatory uh, uh, now compliance in, in Switzerland is getting worse by the day. And, and this is all started by, by FATCA, really. Uh, but I want to stress that all the Americans can ha have real problems um, opening a bank account outside of the U.S., I mean, Canadians still can, uh, but the Americans have real problems doing that because there are virtually no bank that accepts Americans today. Still, today, they can transfer money out, for example, to buy gold. That window might be closed at some point, so, but therefore, it's, it's the right time now to take advantage of that. How would, uh, they, because, Egon, how would they do that? How would somebody in North America, for example, uh, move, uh, take up an account in uh, with gold Switzerland? Is that it's a straightforward process? Yes. We, we go through the normal compliance like everybody has to do and there has to be declared funds and all of that. But so we set up an account, but it's not a bank account. It's just an account from the point of view of, of, of uh, compliance. Uh, and then as soon as the account is in, uh, approved and it doesn't take that long, then uh, well, anyone, Americans or any from anywhere else, as long as it's approved, they transfer the money uh, to us and we immediately buy the gold or the silver um, and it's then 
um, we buy straight from the refiners, so we know that Swiss refiners refine more gold than anyone else in the world, and it goes from the refiners straight into the vault in the name of the client. He gets a warehouse receipt in his name and has full control. Uh, so that's absolutely feasible today. Uh, it might not be in a year's or two years' time. Uh, we never know, but today, and, and uh, North uh, citizens of the U.S. don't even have to declare gold on their F bar today. Property and gold are the are two exclusions uh, actually on on their F bar. So ob obviously they still have to if they sell it they have to pay capital gains etc. But but it's not a declarable asset on their F bar. So that is an advantage too. So there's no problem today for for Americans or for most people in the world uh, to buy gold. Um, through us, and as I said, we have clients in, in over 40 countries, and, and including the U.S. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of U.S. clients. Wait, what about uh, uh, corporations, uh, um, treasuries using uh, precious metals as, as really part of their treasury management strategy? Because you know we're talking about holding cash. What about holding gold and as protecting their yeah. their assets to manage? Oh yeah, you asked about that. Absolutely. Um, let's today. People with uh, bigger sums of money, uh, very few of them are investors in gold, whether that is family offices, because I, I mean, I speak to a lot of family offices. There are some families who have gold and have had it through generations, because if you think about it, gold is the best uh, asset for um, preserving generational wealth. Um, and therefore, they should, family offices should always have uh, or, or, or wealthy families should always have part of their assets in gold, just as an insurance at the bottom of their wealth pyramid. But they don't. They have very little gold today. I mean, they have, you know, if I go to speak to a big uh, family office group of 100 people or so, there might be two who have gold. That's all. Um, and the same with the institutions. They have not yet understood the value of gold. And in my view, that will change dramatically as uh, we get uh, higher inflation, because as, as you probably, as you know, I believe that there will be massive money printing coming in the in the next few years, uh, and I mean the U.S. will start printing again, and all other countries are already printing, Japan, Europe, etc. Uh, and uh, eventually, the currencies will decline to to the zero level that that I uh, described before, and as Voltaire said, uh, and that means collapsing currencies. Uh, means inflation and then hyperinflation, and this is what we will see in many countries. So as inflation starts to increase, and of course institutions are not seeing that yet, and they're you know they're never ahead of the curve; they're always behind, because that's what the trustees uh, want them to uh, to to be. So they are, but yeah, but sadly that's the case. You know, they, they never sure. buy something that is unloved or undervalued, like gold was in 2002, and gold is today again. Uh, they wouldn't buy it now. They'll wait when gold goes up to 1500, 1900, etc., and inflation increase. Then they will all get go into gold. And of course, there will not be enough gold in the world at these prices. So if they want to put 100 million into gold, they will get a lot less for their money in, by, by way of gold bars that, that, um, in the next few years than they get today. But in my view, there will in the next few years, trustees and uh, and uh, management in, in the in the institutional uh, type businesses, they will all require the the uh, managers to invest in gold to protect them against inflation. So that will be a massive market, um, and uh, will lead to gold going up substantially. And as you said, they they kind of trail it. The two thousand, if we recall, the two thousand eight crisis. When it really broke is when they broke the buck on the short-term money market funds. And so what happened is all of the chief financial officers suddenly went to their terminals and decided to move their money out of money market funds, et cetera, their holding cash, and move it into treasuries and other options. And $5 trillion was suddenly moving, which forced Bernanke and Paulson to quickly go to the Capitol Hill because this was a serious global issue. But it happened literally within about 24 to 48 hours, as soon as... The federal broke the uh, the buck. Uh, That's the kinds of sudden shifts in attitude that can come and would come. And in this case, likely gold, any store of value that's outside the banking system is where they're going to go. 
Absolutely, and and you know you you add the the um, uh, increase in demand uh, for for protection purposes to the physical uh, situation with gold, which as I said today tight because it's only the paper market that's holding it down, and to that you add what I said before the fact that the, the paper market can never actually uh, get delivery of physical gold, and all those factors will mean that once demand increases, gold will go up very very fast. Now, I stress again, we are not recommending gold from the point of view of making a quick buck. Our investors, as I said, we have had major um, uh, amounts of money into gold since 2002, and virtually none of our investors have, has ever sold because they're holding it for the reasons that they should, wealth preservation purposes, not for going in and out and, and, and cashing in. Uh, because this, if, if, if the risk of such that uh, investors should hold this gold for a longer period. There will be a time, as I said, I'm not a gold bag, there will be a time, whether that's in five years' time or 10 years' time, whatever it is, where we will say that gold is no longer uh, undervalued uh, and there will be other assets which will be bargains and therefore you, know, you will use some of your gold uh, for buying things that, that are at bargain prices and that time will come, but today, people should have a major part of their assets in gold, in my view. Egan, we have to break. Any uh, closing comments you'd like to make for our uh, listeners in recapping what Matterhorn and gold Switzerland have to offer? Yes, I, I think that people should hold gold, hold it outside the banking system. Uh, we have uh, the most unique system in the world for doing that and the most secure vaults uh, and for people to hold it in their names directly with direct access. But, you know, I'm, so I think that is absolutely critical. But what is even more critical is that people should put their house in order, whether that's financially and whether it's how they live, etc. And then they should stop worrying because, you know, life is too good. Life is too good to just worry about these things all the time. Yes, times will be a lot tougher in the next few years than they ha have been for us um, in the last few decades. Be a lot tougher for our children and grandchildren, but nevertheless, you know, people survive in all kinds of economies: in war and when there's poverty, etc. They survive. So just put your house in order and really enjoy life, because life is too good not to enjoy. Uh, so that's, I think, very important to think about. It's not all about money. It's not all all about uh, all about tr trying to to uh, protect your wealth. It is all about enjoying life. Uh, and, and as I said, protecting your wealth is part of that, of course. It makes you sleep better at night, though, and that makes life even that much better. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, all the best, and we will have you back, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you very much, Gordon. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you. This has been Gordon T. Long, editor and publisher of GordonTLong.com. New recordings are posted regularly and can be found at GordonTLong.com. New show notifications are available through RSS feed, iTunes, and other social networking venues at GordonTLong.com.